How do you think Google, Microsoft, Netflix, or any other company that has in-house developed applications and software, be that a small or large organization, are managing their software releases and deployments? Have you really ever given this any thought while using these applications? Well, I can assure you that whatever method that they're using, it is not by having someone manually deploy any new feature across the whole infrastructure for these applications. That's just nonsense, right? <laughs> they must be using some tools to automate and even secure these software features and deployment releases. This what would make sense, right? Again, because you have, you're talking about a very large infrastructure, you're talking about a very complex configurations. You don't want people to manually go through these and make mistakes, then things will go down and, you know, it will be bad for the business. So today in this video, I will introduce you to one tool out of many that are being used for this purpose. This video is only an introduction, a first step to get you into what is known DevOps. Or maybe even I will go further with you to talk about more points and extend this into DevSecOps. Interesting, right? Hopefully you have the interest same as I do because I'm really excited to start talking to you about these topics and these concepts. Now, if you are excited, how about you consider clicking that subscribe button and maybe also like the video or maybe just like the video because it helps the video reach more people so more people will benefit from this topic as well. Now, initially I meant this video to be one part, but while I was doing the script and I was planning for this, it turned out to be longer and larger than I expected. So I decided to split it into two parts. In this first one, I will cover the introduction, the overview on cloud build and some DevOps terms. This is the boring talk <laughs> part of the whole idea that I came up with. The next part will be about showing you a real use case or actually a use case that is driven from a real life scenario and case that I have encountered in my work. It will be done on this project that you're seeing in front of you. That will involve deploying application from GitHub into a few VMs that are running in GCP in this project. Let me start with the first part here with the boring talk. <laughs> I have mentioned the term DevOps or DevSecOps multiple times by now, and I think it's very important that you are aware of this concept, at least from a high level perspective. DevOps is a combination of two words, development and operations. And from a high level, it is when devs do operations and when operation guys do development work as well. So it goes both ways and it combines both roles. DevOps recently has expanded to become DevSecOps, which does combine security in the middle, if you haven't noticed that. <laughs> now the sec here, the security here refers to securing the pipelines and deployments and the source code, which can be shorted into securing your supply chain. And that's not the goods or logistics supply chain. That's different stuff, really. <laughs> The supply chain in this context is your code and applications, artifacts, such as the binary files, images, Docker images, containers, stuff that the application need to use to be able to function and work, the updates, releases, you know, this stuff. <laughs> now, since DevOps is a concept and a methodology, then there is no tool called DevOps something <laughs> or anything like that. Again, it's just a set of concepts, a set of di uh, different tools. It's uh, a mentality. It's a process. It's, it's not just a tool or you can just define it in a, a specific tool or anything. But then there are tools that will help you implement DevOps in the organization, including the one I'm talking to you about today, which is Cloud Build. Now, these tools must be used by people who are aware of both development and operations, as mentioned in my beginning. Someone should have the development skills, but who also is aware of infrastructure stuff, such as some networking concepts, how to operate VMs, how to manage Linux or Windows VMs or operating systems. I mean, they should not be fully competent in networks. They should not be CCIE or even CCNAs or stuff like that. They just need to be aware of whatever that they are doing, right? When, whenever they're troubleshooting an application or they want to configure an application, they need to understand what's required to make this application to work. Now, it's been like almost 10 minutes or even a little bit less than this. And 
did you even notice something in all what I've talked about still in this video? I haven't mentioned any GCP specific points yet, except that specific reference to Cloud Build as one of the tools. It's not the tool or it's just one of many tools. So this by itself indicates that DevOps is a platform or vendor neutral, right? It does not matter on what platform you are on because you can still apply DevOps methodology regardless of this, which is also, I hope, became obvious to you by now. Now into the GCP stuff, let's assume that I have an application that I want to deploy to a set of VMs and I have many VMs that it becomes very tedious job and a very bad idea to do this manually to each of these VMs. And you may ask if you have such a large application environment as described, then why you are using VMs, not other managed platform or not other way of publishing the application. And the answer to this is there might be some use cases that mandate you use VMs. Some of these cases might be you need to use an application that is stateful. Um, you might need to use an application that cannot be run in a container or in Kubernetes, for example, or in App Engine or any other managed platform. It's just runs on a VM and you can't get away around it. So you have to use VMs. So there are use cases. These use cases sometimes are very valid and very strong. Now, back to my use case. How do I deploy this application into many VMs and reduce effort and almost cost as well, right? Well, GCP offers many ways for me to do that, and I will show you how to do this using Cloud Build, which is one of the many tools that even Google has for doing DevOps. It is not the only one that Google offers for you to do DevOps. Now, DevOps is a serverless service that can import your source code from multiple sources and build that code for you to produce what is called artifacts. These are just like the binaries, like exe files in Windows or Docker images or bin files in Linux, you know, just whatever the application is made of or need to use to work. It can also deploy these artifacts to whatever target platform that you define and you can configure anything that you want in cloud build. And so how does it really do this? Well, it can do it by using what's called builders. These builders are just Docker images that are configured to integrate and be used with Cloud Build. Basically, you can use it to do anything that can be executed manually in command line. So if you open your command line now in your own system, type some commands, then you can even do this in Cloud Build, transfer these commands to an image and execute them with Cloud Build automatically. And you might ask, well, what is the, or why it is special, you know, talking about Cloud Build, then my answer would be made of many points. However, I can summarize this by, again, it's serverless, so you don't really need to worry about infrastructure. Now, if you compare it to Jenkins, for example, which is another very common and a great open source tool, you will need to set it up, right? You need to have a VM or somewhere to install Jenkins, configure it, and then build your pipelines. Well, Cloud Build, you don't have to worry about setting up. Even it, it's just there for you. You can just log in to the console, go to Cloud Build, start building your pipeline, and you can do whatever you want. That's there is no infrastructure for you. The other point is it's GCP stuff, so it integrates with the GCP products and services. You can control it using IAM and integrate it with other services as well. And the other reason, which is I already mentioned, hopefully you paid a little bit of attention to that, which is it doesn't really care what you're doing with it. That's if I can use this term, because again, it uses Docker images, or it uses container images to execute whatever workflow. You can use a pre-built image, you can build your own image and you can call it in Cloud Build and execute whatever workflow. I mean, imagine this, right? You can use an image to compile maybe .NET application, and then you can use another image to push the code. You can use a get image, an image that contains get tools and command line stuff to push the uh, code that you just built into a, a, a get repo. You can use another image to pull that code and deploy it into whatever platform. And it, it can cross any platform. There are 
images that can connect to Azure platform. There are images that can, can connect to AWS. There are images that can just give you shell capabilities or you can execute normal stuff. And basically you will see this very clear in the next example, in the next part where I will show you how you can easily configure it and have your whatever stuff that you want to push into VMs easily pushed into these VMs. And that's the starting point. It's the easiest thing that you can do with Cloud Build. I have done many other complex uh, examples and scenarios, but then this one is very interesting because I had to do it for a customer really. And the, the challenge that I had with the customer was they were not aware of any DevOps, any automation stuff. They, they were using some old school stuff where they have a server, a web server that's hosted in a cPanel. And whenever they want to upload their application or their code, they would open the FTP files and stuff like that. They will then push the code or just copy and refresh the page and you know the, their application will be there. That by itself is a challenge because you're relying on the user or the developer themselves to make sure they are secure. And if the developer forgot to do or forgot to change a credential or even push the credential into some open or some publicly exposed uh, web directory, then that's a big disaster. So what I came up with, I told the customer that let's think of a way where you can still see familiar stuff. You can see, you can still see a VM. You can access that VM if you want, but let's change the way that you work. Let's start with how you handle the code. So I, I propose that the developer should push their code into a Git repository and that Git will be replicated to Google Cloud. I mean, the, the end work or the, the maximum thing that the developer will work was just doing Git add and then Git commit and then Git push. That's all what's required from them. Then it will be my own job. So I configured the Git repo for them. I configured the cloud source repo as well. and. Um, created the cloud build trigger, which will pull the code and push it into the VM. So yeah, that's the idea. It's it's about transition. So it's a, it's an entry point for automation for me. And it's a way for me to make him comfortable and aware of what we can do in GCP. And then when next steps come, when the time to move further come, when he will be ready, then I can tell them that you guys now need to get rid of the VM. Let's talk about maybe serverless platforms, App Engine, Cloud Run, even GKE, whatever stuff that can be done. So um, yeah, it's, it's a way for me to introduce change slowly to people who are not aware of these things. So yeah, that's basically what I have, uh, my boring introduction. I hope it's not as boring as uh, I hope it is. <laughs> And hopefully it, it did give you something new. I want to end this part by just showing you around what I have in my own project. So this is my project that I will be showing the demo on. And if I go to Compute Engine, you will see three VMs. Now you can do this on one VM. You can do it on two or even 10 VMs. It doesn't really matter as long as I have these levels here. This is my key to the whole deployment. And also, in, a, in addition to the VMs, I have a load balancer that will be uh, used to publicly access the application. And also, I have the cloud repo, which will open in a new tab. This is replicating from my GitHub. And in the next video, I will show you how you can connect GitHub to cloud source repo so it can be a mirror for GitHub. And also, I have the uh, a startup script that is uh, available in... Um, what is cloud storage. So this cl uh, startup script will make sure the VMs are ready, the VMs are prepared for whatever uh, thing that I want to do with these VMs later on. I'm not sure why it's not loading. And I also have the cloud build, which is a little bit at the bottom. Some people get irritated really from my friends when you see me scroll down all of this menu and trying to find that. They will just tell me use the search and just find it. But you know, I just enjoy doing this scroll. <laughs> so yeah, cloud build there. Uh, there are some, it's empty right now. I will configure the trigger with you as well. And I will show you how you can build the trigger using the cloud build.yaml file, which is a very interesting way of building the trigger. So there is nothing in here. So that's my first part. I hope again, this was useful. If you have any questions, 
about DevOps, about automation, DevSecOps, even SRE site reliability engineering, which is something I will eventually get into in this channel, then don't hesitate to post anything, any question in the comments section. I'll be more than happy to answer any question. And again, I would really appreciate if you subscribe and click the like button so that more people can find this video and benefit from it. Also, if you want other content about GCP, then there are a lot of videos in this channel. And if you happen to be a Google Workspace admin, then I happen to have also a course about Google Workspace administration that it's a very detailed and a very long one, honestly, that contains everything you need to be able to comprehensively manage your Google Workspace uh, deployment and implementation. You can get it at a discounted price and you can have it forever. You can check the link in the video description. Now with this, I will see you in the next part. Hopefully this was useful and take care.